NVIDIA, AMD, Intel. Which one should you choose? Because not only is it not as simple as you might think, but it's also one of the most expensive purchases that you're going to make when it comes to your computer. So you really can't afford to get it wrong, as it can be costly to try something new for it to only not fit your needs. You obviously want a GPU that's going to give you the best performance possible at the lowest cost, but what's less obvious is the circumstances each manufacturer excels at and what situations they should probably be avoided. We're going to answer the top questions I get from you guys stuff like performance differences, ray tracing, upscaling, streaming, professional applications, so you can make the decision that's right for you. Oh, and bonus, I anonymously asked this exact same question to a few online groups and also Bing Chat to see what kind of advice the average person would get from those sources with mixed results. Let me explain. So I have a question. Are you an avid PC enthusiast stuck with that ugly ass Windows watermark ruining your gaming and streaming experience? Well, I have great news for you. WhoKeys is a software licensing website dedicated to getting you affordable keys. And the best part is you can get rid of that watermark in a matter of minutes. All you need to do is head down to the video description, click the sponsor link and enjoy an additional 25% off using my coupon code TL20. With PayPal checkout and quick key delivery, all you need to do is hit the Windows key, type activate and paste your key right here to become fully active. Activated. It really is that simple and that cheap. So head down to the video description if that sounds right for you. And thank you Hookies for sponsoring this video. So we're going to be covering the top considerations and most important features when it comes to choosing a GPU. But let's start by taking a look at this in the context of the responses I got online before hopefully I provide a better, more comprehensive answer for you guys. This is a question that I asked two Facebook groups, the GPU subreddit and Bean Chat, based on GPT-4. I wanted to be specific with the manufacturers and provide a real use case that I feel is representative of the majority of users, one that I've personally seen online before. So before I talk about what I would expect from the answers, let me show you the worst response I got. But do you think it's from Facebook, Reddit, or from Bing Chat? Pause here and let me know in the comment section. The worst response I got was from Bing Chat. Just take a look at this useless combination of words. Started off with somewhat of a good start. I mean, AMD and Nvidia being the top two GP manufacturers right now makes a lot of sense. It follows on to say that Nvidia is the high performance option with a premium price tag, which I feel is somewhat misleading. And we'll come back to that in a bit. It then spits out specific board partner versions of two generation old cards. And for some reason, a Quadro 5000, which would be a horrible choice for for most people, given its price and relative performance, but concludes that for gaming and streaming, RTX 3000 and RX 6000 is recommended, which could make sense given where we are in the product lifecycle, but ignores the current generation altogether. So why is this response so bad? I would personally agree that Nvidia is higher performance premium price tag, but only when you're talking about the extremely high end of the spectrum and potentially considering ray tracing too. More on that in a bit. Then almost every recommendation was either out of date, too vague, or didn't take Intel into consideration. And also didn't touch on many of the important topics that you need to consider when choosing a GPU. I hope this helps. No, it really didn't. And if someone took your advice, I'd be very upset. So let's see if real people can offer better advice. Summarizing the results from Reddit and Facebook, the general advice from users was that Intel isn't mature enough yet to be a proper consideration and needs a newer CPU with rebar to function well, which I would agree with. AMD is the better bang for the buck option, makes total sense. And Nvidia is the only real ray tracing option and provides better upscaling, which I get why that was the response, but I don't fully agree with. But this was a lot better than being chats response and took a lot more of my question into consideration. And although Intel have come a long way with driver updates, I wholeheartedly agree that Arc Alchemist isn't mature enough to get a recommendation for most people and will largely be left out of the rest of this conversation. But I feel like a few of the major points here resulted in some misleading answers. So let's break down the consideration for choosing Nvidia, AMD or Intel and where you may want to choose one over the other. The first place that we need to start is rasterization or pure gaming performance. The reason that this is the most important consideration is that it has the highest impact to the largest percentage of GPU owners. And the importance of it would have been obvious in my question. It's true that Nvidia typically has the highest performing card per generation, but I honestly think that's the wrong way to answer that question. Put it this way, do you care if the best performing card is Nvidia? 
when the price tag of that card is $1,600 and you only have $300 to spend. Essentially, the best performing card is irrelevant unless you're actually considering buying it. So the best way to answer that question for somebody who has less than $1,000 to spend is in the context of who provides the best performance at a given price range. So although Nvidia has the highest performing card on the market right now, our comprehensive value data shows that AMD will provide better raster performance for your money. You will get a faster pure gaming GPU with AMD. That's the answer that actually matters, which Reddit and Facebook did get right. But rasterization isn't the only rendering technique for gamers, and ray tracing is becoming more and more popular as games adopt it. So it's important to understand the difference in ray tracing between these manufacturers, and why you maybe shouldn't care as much as the marketing tells you you should. Ray tracing is becoming more popular as games adopt it and is a more advanced rendering technique that computes additional environmental elements like how the light would bounce to you. This provides a more detailed and accurate representation of lighting and results in a more photorealistic scene compared to rasterized rendering. So how do Nvidia, AMD and Intel stack up when it comes to ray tracing? And why do I think the response I got from this is misleading? It is true that Nvidia is the ray tracing king and the reason for this is due to their implementation of hardware specific ray tracing cores, which allows them to be more efficient when it comes to this kind of rendering. This allows an Nvidia GPU to produce more ray trace frames compared to otherwise similarly performing cards within the same generation. So that's a win for Nvidia. But it's worth remembering that Intel's ray tracing is pretty good for the money, and AMD tends to roughly be a generation behind. No one scoffed at 3090 Ti ray tracing performance, and that's what the 7900 XTX has. But be careful here, because I feel too many people put too much weight on how important ray tracing is for two reasons. Let me explain. Enabling ray tracing for enhanced visuals can have anywhere from a significant to a crippling impact to your performance, so much so that it's typically not even worth considering for lower end GPUs. And unlike rasterization rendering, your ability to utilize ray tracing is going to be highly game dependent, as in every game on Steam's most popular games list can be raster rendered, but only about 10% of the top 100 most popular games support any type of ray tracing. Additionally, most most people consider ray tracing to be a disadvantage in competitive shooters as the increased frame rate from rasterized rendering can give you a latency advantage compared to ray tracing, which for most people is more important in this type of game, bringing the amount of games people are likely to enable ray tracing down even further and limiting its scope of usefulness. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that ray tracing is pointless. I mean, I enable it on almost every single player story based game I can. All that I'm saying is that you need to understand how much a better ray tracing experience is going to impact you. The last thing I want is for you to overpay for an improvement to a feature that you are rarely going to use. So you need to be realistic about its value. But if you do only play ray trace titles and you always enable it and you're shopping at the mid to high end of the spectrum, spending more on ray tracing could make a lot more sense. Just be smart about how much weight you give to better performance with this feature compared to focusing more on rasterization performance, which is far more applicable to most people. And make sure that you do check out ray tracing performance for each manufacturer's cards that you would consider in the games that you would enable it. Then you can decide if it's worth the price difference for that niche use case performance increase, which is a good time to talk about upscaling technologies. Compared to ray tracing, upscaling and frame generation technologies are arguably more important features, which includes NVIDIA DLSS, AMD FSR, and Intel XESS. Upscaling technologies like these render the game at a lower resolution, then scale up to the desired resolution and approximate the pixels in between, allowing you to get close to the performance of a lower resolution experience while also getting close to the fidelity of native rendering, which is a great feature for not only allowing you to play more demanding games at higher settings than you otherwise could, but also for increasing the useful lifespan of the graphics card as more demanding games are released. And this is, in my opinion, a good reason to go for Nvidia. 
with an NVIDIA GPU. You can use both their first-party upscaler as well as other open-source upscalers, whereas for AMD and Intel, you will not be able to use NVIDIA DLSS, which tends to produce a better image when trying to push higher frame rates at increased fidelity. I haven't personally done a lot of A-B testing and pixel peeping on this, but I'm going to link a Hardware Unbox video below for you to check out, as their video will provide better value than I can here. And this is the conclusion that Reddit also pointed out a better experience for NVIDIA cards. But it's worth keeping up to date on this topic, as it's one of the fastest moving and improving features for GPUs right now, largely because it's mostly a software implementation, so driver releases can impact it dramatically. NVIDIA also have frame generation on their current gen cards with DLSS 3, which not only upscales, but also generates approximated frames in between the real ones, which as of right now, AMD has yet to respond with a similar feature and I would expect it to not be as good as Nvidia's implementation, at least until it matures. That's just what we've learned from history. So a quick recap as we move into other use cases and considerations that will affect which GPU manufacturer is right for you. We've mostly removed Intel from the consideration unless you know you're very much getting a first generation experience and you're happy supporting that. More competition is better. AMD offer the best value for most gamers by an overwhelming majority. NVIDIA offer a better ray tracing experience, but consider how important that really is to you. And NVIDIA's upscaler is currently better, but AMD and Intel tend to offer more memory for similar performing and priced GPUs. This is becoming more important with popular games being released that likely won't change. I'll probably do a separate piece on this, but it is an important factor. Oh, and for VR, the general consensus is that NVIDIA performs better, and if you're concerned about efficiency, you will want to look into this per model. Power efficiency typically scales differently on different architectures, so high-end versus low-end may flip who's most efficient. But what about other things? Software instability, streaming, or what about professional applications like those of you looking to video edit or 3D model? These are things that could mean that it's not even possible for you to go for one manufacturer over the other, and we need to discuss it. When it comes to software and stability, this is where there's a lot of opinions, but very little quantifiable information. But from my experience, you tend to get more minor issues with Nvidia, but issues with AMD tend to be more often a bigger issue. Although this isn't by magnitude either way, just make sure that you use a program like DDU, especially when swapping manufacturers. This can be one of the biggest reasons that people swap and then have a bad time. But with software usability, AMD, honestly, their software has a much better interface and is much easier to use, which is a big win. Additionally, to get Nvidia's game overlay to even function, you need to log into GeForce Now, which seems extremely unnecessary. But having that Nvidia functionality is going to be important for streamers and creators. And the flip side of Nvidia's software suite is that it currently provides a better streaming experience. AMD do have an answer for most of NVIDIA's software features, but not all of them. And NVIDIA renders a much higher quality video file in H.264, which will make a significant impact to your streams. Although it's worth mentioning that current generation offerings from AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel support the new AV1 encoding, which is touted to be the next generation for streamers and produces an extremely similar quality video file as a result. Meaning Nvidia currently wins for streamers, but that's likely to level out when streaming platforms allow for AV1, hopefully this year. But one of the biggest factors outside gaming is if you do any type of professional workload or plan to in the future, this is where you're more than likely going to have a much better experience with NVIDIA. There are a limited number of professional applications where AMD makes more sense. So it's worth looking that up in the applications that you use. But the default for professionals has always been NVIDIA for a very good reason. In something like Adobe's Creative Suite, the most popular creative application suite in the world, Overall, you're going to get a much better experience with NVIDIA in terms of both performance and stability, which in my opinion, breaks down the reasons to go for one manufacturer over the other to this, like with any other purchase you make. There will be trade-offs and all you need to do is figure out what is important to you, then decide based on that. But no matter which one you buy, someone is going to tell you that you're wrong. But the good news is, by watching this video, you are already more informed than most, and you aren't making this decision for them. 
You're making this decision for you. It's not their money. It's not their life, nor is it their experience. So don't let them bully you over it. But now you know which manufacturer to focus on, which model should you go for? Well, check out the GPU value playlist. One of the most popular videos is the best GPUs to buy right now series, where we cover each manufacturer's GPUs in terms of price to performance and quantify their value. And you can check that out by clicking here. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated. And I hope you have an amazing day.